Hi, I'm Mel from Cold Truth. I hope you'll join me tonight as I review Sight Unseen, Carolee John Horvath, also known as Charles. I did a live last week and I was just very unhappy with the way it turned out. I let my nerves get the best of me. And this is my attempt to try to make that up before I have his mother on next weekend. Um, this is a lot harder than it looks, so please be patient with me as I navigate my way through YouTube and YouTube Lives. And, um, okay, so let's get started. Okay, so we are going to start our tour in Leeds, Bradford, at the Leeds Bradford Airport in the United Kingdom. Carolee John Horvath, also known as Charles Horvath Allen, was born on August 21st, 1968 in Clutchenor, Ontario, Canada to Arpad Carolee Horvath and Denise Mary Horvath Allen. At five weeks old, Charles and his mom left Canada for Yorkshire, England in the United Kingdom, where he remained until September 21st of 1988. What a cute little boy and his mom. Carolee John Horvath, also known as Charles, age 20 in 1988, is described as a white male with brown eyes and black, short, straight hair. He is six feet tall, weighing 150 pounds with a medium build and a light complexion. He has a tattoo on his left upper arm that is a side profile of a mohawk skull. He has a scar on the right side of his scalp. On September 21st, 1988, Carolee John Horvath, also known as Charles, who we will just start to call Charles from now on out, takes off from Leeds Bradford Airport, headed to Montreal, Quebec City, Canada. On September 22nd, 1988, Charles arrives in Montreal, Quebec City, Canada, to start his trek across Canada, also known as the Great White North, the second largest country in the world, 3.9 million square miles to be exact. Canada is mostly uninhabited due to the Arctic White North. Many of these areas receive snowfall for nearly six months of the year. The vast majority of Canadians live within the 93 miles of the Canadian-United States border. On December 14, 1988, Charles's mother, Denise Horvath Allen, visits for two weeks to watch Charles strut the catwalk at the Delta Hotel where he worked and modeled. Sometime in January of 1989, Charles leaves Montreal by Greyhound bus to visit his godfather, Mark Gabriel, also known as Gabby, in Cochinour, Ontario, Canada. Charles travels from Cochinour, Ontario, Canada to visit his godfather, Gabby. Charles had accidentally left his passport at his godfather's house. Um, the passport had fallen down the side of a chair and was found later. On March 15, 1989, Charles visits his father, Max, Arpod Carolee Horvath, in Thunder Bay, Ontario, Canada. Charles leaves Thunder Bay by Greyhound bus, and he also starts to hitchhike his way across Canada. On March 20th, 1989, Charles cashes a check at the Royal Bank of Canada in Swift Current, Saskatchewan, Canada. The teller remembers his beautiful smile. On March 20th, 1989, Charles cashes his check in Swift Current, 
From here, Charles is next seen at the Rimrock Hotel in Bath, Alberta, Canada. By April of 1989, Charles had made his way to the Rimrock Hotel in Bath, Alberta from Swift Current, where he was spotted at the bank. He was working for a lady named Anna at the Rim Rock, and she remembers him fondly. On April 17, 1989, Charles calls his mother, Collect, to chat. They talk about going to Hong Kong for their birthdays in August. Charles will be turning 21 on the 21st of August, 1989, and his mother would be turning 40. This is the last time his mother heard her son's voice. Charles leaves Bath near the end of April and is next heard from in Kelowna, British Columbia, Canada. May 3rd is believed to be Charles' first night in Kelowna, British Columbia, Canada. He spoke with his father, Max, upon his arrival by a Greyhound bus, and he slept in City Park his first night in town. He meets Joanne Zebroff within his first few days of being in Kelowna. She says they became fast friends because of his friendly nature and him being new to the area. Charles was unique and fun. He spoke to her about his love for his mother often, telling her of their plans to meet in Hong Kong for their birthdays in August. Charles told her he was concerned about the high cost of the ticket from Vancouver to Hong Kong. On May 4th through the 6th of 1989, Charles stays at the Gospel Mission in Kelowna. Gino says he sees Charles leaving the campground abruptly on the same day. Charles left his tent and all of his belongings, including his ID, passport, and other important papers. Charles did not return as far as Gino knew. This is the owner of Tiny Town Campground. His name is Phil Flett, and he died in 2021. And with him is a resident and former camper of Tiny Town, Trent, or Kevin Trent Egan. Um, Charles's mother, Denise, will be telling us more about um, the info she received later in this episode. Items left in Tiny Town. We will pick up. With where we left off there with the slides when we interview Mrs. Allen. This is where Charles is said to have went to look for work with the people that he met at the campground, Job Mart Employee Center on Bernard Avenue. According to Locate International, a, a really awesome website that I found. Charles stayed with local people on St. Paul Street in downtown Kilauea on May 12th through the 16th. And I just... We don't have an exact address on this road, so right now it has us at 1165 St. Paul Street. And I'm assuming that the person that he stayed with lived in an apartment or rented a flat on this road. Um, it is in downtown Kelowna. And so, um, and again, this happened in 1989 and is now 2022. So things may have looked a lot different back then. On May 17th or 18th, Charles was referred to the Tannis Family Orchard by the Agricultural Job Agency in downtown Kelowna. Deanna Tannis reportedly fed Charles lunch at her front, on her front porch. RCMP said that Deanna told them that Charles wanted to get away from his family. When Denise met Deanna, she asked her if Charles had said this. Her response was, absolutely not. At this time, Deanna told Denise that she had given Charles some work boots. Charles was employed in Flintstones 
Bedrock City Park for half a day in May of 1989. On May 26th of 1989, Charles picked up his last check for $20. Charles is said by the RCMP, Royal Canadian Mounted Police, to have cashed his check Orchard Park Royal Bank of Canada at 1840 Cooper Road, Kelowna, B.C., Canada. This is the official missing date for Charles, May 26th of 1989. Charles cashes a check at the Orchard Park Royal Bank of Canada from Flintstone's Bedrock City theme park on May 26th of 1989. This is the last known location Charles is said to have visited, according to the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. This is the date listed in his missing flyers. I have trouble wrapping my head around the information given by Gino that Charles fled the tiny town campground, abandoning his all of his belongings, including his ID, on the 19th of May. Yet he pops back up on the 26th, very close to tiny town. Where was he for seven days without his belongings? It seems to me someone is not telling the truth. The RCMP did, in fact, lie about Charles telling his family that living, telling his family living in Canada that he planned to disappear and going somewhere his mother could not find him. Yes, they lied about this. My question, is there physical proof that Charles was seen at this bank on the 26th of May, 1989? If you know where the remains of Charles K.J. Horvath Allen are, please contact his mom, Denise Horvath Allen. Her email is searchforcharleshorvath at hotmail.co.uk. Again, that is search for C-H-A-R-L-E-S-H-O-R-V-A-T-H at hotmail.co.uk. Her telephone number is 011-44-208-332-6776. Or you can call Corporal Lisa Cullen. Her telephone number is 250-762-3300. The Serious Crime Unit in Kelowna, Detached RCMP, Kelowna, British Columbia, Canada. And this is Charles's mom, who we will be meeting in our next episode next weekend. And I found this and I just thought, this is, this is what a mother is. I shall search for my son until the day I die. And I think that just pretty much sums up the love of a mother and the steadfastness of this particular mother. She has gone 33 years almost 33 years without knowing what happened to her son. It's time that people start talking and the truth become known of what happened to Charles in May of 1989. Did he go off with one of the bikers? I have trouble believing that considering he left all of his belongings in tiny town campground May 19th of 1989. The bikers would have only been in town on the 19th. Auckland Stampede was to begin on the 20th, and it lasted through the 22nd. So therefore, they would have only been staying there in one night, and that leads me to believe that Gino's account was correct. Was Gino telling the truth about Charles leaving abruptly? I don't know. I've never met him. He seems like a pretty genuine guy, but then again, who can you trust? All I know is something is up with the tiny town campground. I just can't put my finger on where the information is that is missing from this timeline. But somewhere in the tiny details of tiny town, I believe is the information that Mrs. Horvath Allen deserves to know. 
And I hope that one day soon she will have the answers and she will finally be able to lay her sweet son to rest. Thank you for listening to Cold Truth and we'll see you next time. went ahead and put down some of the information for um, Charles and the bikers in May, May 20th and the 22nd of 1989 is when the, it was called the Falkland Stampede was to take place on May 19th, 1989. When Charles was at tiny town, 75 bikers from the U S on their way to party at the Falkland Stampede. It's a rodeo stopped at the campground. She said there was someone who said, something about a polite Englishman being killed by a biker trying to earn a gang patch. I know something terrible happened to him. He was a six foot tall, handsome young man who thought he was worldly, but sadly he was a dreamer. He was naive. He believed anything anyone told him. Nothing has come of that early tip. Police are still looking for answers. Anyone with information can call Crime Stoppers at one 800 222-8477 or crimestoppers.net. This is a picture of the rodeo I found in newspapers.com. This is the airport in Vancouver where Charles had already looked into getting a ticket from Vancouver to Hong Kong to meet up with his mom. And that is why I just do not think this man disappeared. There are multiple sources that are separate from each other, such as Joanne, her mother, her brother, um, the family that, that owned the orchard. Um, and there's one other family that I have yet to be able to quite nail down the information on. And we will be talking to his mother about some of that because she did meet them. And... All of them say that, that Charles spoke of his mother very fondly, that he didn't say anything about never coming home or her never finding him or running away and leaving and disappearing. He never mentioned any of that, but he did mention going to Hong Kong to meet his mother for their birthdays. When someone makes a plan in the, in the near future, so we're in May and then June, July, August, and that's when he was looking at a ticket. Now, he did express some concern with Joanne that the ticket was quite expensive. And um, she says that he was a little bit worried about that. And he still needed to talk to his mom about what they were going to do. And all of that is futuristic thinking. And that is why I don't think that Charles uh, did anything to harm himself. Nor do I think that he wanted to disappear from... Kelowna and never to be found again. It is very hard to not leave a digital footprint from where you have gone in the world. And Charles would be, let's see, I'm 43. So Charles would be 53, almost 54 right about now. And for someone to not have their passport, if you remember, Charles left his passport accidentally at his godfather's house in, um, Kuchinor, Ontario, Canada, which is quite a long way. So it's not like, and it's not like his godfather wouldn't tell his other family and his mother that he came back for his passport. She actually has his passport. His mother has collected evidence from, from the United Kingdom all the way to Vancouver, British Columbia. She has scoured the entire coastline of the 93 some square miles that is inhabited by um, Canadians and she has done way more research than the RCMP ha have done to date and I hope that there is something that they can do my concern is is there DNA if the DNA was not collected until 2014 which I believe is what his mother has told me was the date. What about all of the missing or what about all of the unidentified remains 
between 1989 and 2014? Were all of those tested against Charles's DNA? What type of DNA do they have? That makes a big difference. Is there anyone that is in the database, in the Missing in Canada database, that could possibly be Charles? I feel like this is a is something that we can look into pretty easily. And I do have a few friends from the last episode working on this. And I feel like this could be the key that gives this mother back the peace that she's been looking for. Her son resting in peace where she can go and visit him. I can't think of anything more important other than having your son alive with grandkids, married possibly. Maybe you have a few grandkids. Maybe your grandkids are grown and they're in college now. And maybe they have kids of their own and you're a great grandmother. Denise didn't get those opportunities. At least we could give her back. At least you, RCMP, could give her back that peace. And maybe we can help. Let's see what we can do. Goodbye for now from Cold Truth.